Historically, water in southern Florida moved freely, meandering through the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee, overflowing the southern edge of Lake Okeechobee through sheet flow during the wet season, and then slowly moving through the Everglades down to the Gulf of Mexico, Florida Bay, and southern estuaries on the east and west coast. As settlers moved into Florida with a need for dry land farm, there was a movement to drain the swamp. Since the late 1800s, our watershed has been severely altered through the construction of canals, levees, and water control structures, all meant to drain the land when it's too wet and store water for when it's too dry. These alterations have created a disjointed water system, with some areas receiving too much fresh water and other areas receiving too little. Everglades National Park, founded in 1947, is made up of a wide variety of ecosystems, each with unique wildlife. It is home to 39 species that are nationally listed as threatened or endangered, including the Florida panther, the West Indian manatee, and the American crocodile, just to name a few. In the Everglades, water flows through marsh habitats called sloughs. These are depressions that are slightly deeper than adjacent ridges and historically remained flooded for 11 months out of the year. The two main sloughs in the Everglades National Park are Shark River Slough and Taylor Slough. Taylor Slough, which is smaller and located on the east side of the Everglades National Park, flows into Florida Bay. Shark River Slough starts at the northeast portion of Everglades National Park and curves southwest toward the Gulf Coast. Historically, it was the primary pathway for water flow through the park. Everglades National Park is home to an incredible array of plants and animals, each adapted to thrive in their unique habitats, and they all rely on the natural flow of water through the Everglades. However, this natural flow was altered by the construction of a highway in the early 1900s, known as the Tamiami Trail. The Tamiami Trail is a historic highway that was built across the Everglades to connect Tampa to Miami, thus the name Tamiami. While the entire Tamiami Trail was completed in 1928, the Miami-Dade section was completed in 1916. In this newly booming state of Florida, this roadway made traveling between the two major cities safer and faster. The roadway embankment was constructed by digging up limestone and placing it directly on the Everglades muck soil. This process created a borrow canal along the roadway, known today as the L29 Canal. The road and adjacent canal acted as a dam, disrupting the natural sheet flow of water south from Lake Okeechobee through the Everglades down to the Gulf of Mexico and Florida Bay. Over the next few decades, the South Florida landscape was channelized and compartmentalized, leading to excess flows from Lake Okeechobee to the east and west coast estuaries, and large decreases in flow under the Tamiami Trail and into Everglades National Park. Despite this lack of natural water flow, there was still the threat of water flooding the road during high water periods. To prevent this from occurring, a series of small wooden bridges, which were converted to culverts in the 1950s, were added to improve conveyance and eliminate flow over the roadway. In 1948, Congress authorized the Central and Southern Florida Flood Control Project to provide flood protection during the wet season and water supply during the dry season. By the 1960s, project construction around the Tamiami Trail prompted the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to move a 10-mile western stretch of the roadway, which had a risk of flooding, approximately 350 feet to the north, placing it on top of the newly constructed L-29 levee. The original western portion of the Tamiami Trail, called the Old Tamiami Trail, was left in place. However, 500 foot wide gaps were cut at four different locations along the old roadway to allow flow from Water Conservation Area 3A in the north into Everglades National Park. This allowed the elevated 10-mile western stretch to improve water flow. The 11-mile stretch of roadway to the east was left unaltered, so as not to flood privately owned lands. While the water in Shark River Slough historically flowed primarily through the eastern side of the slough, 
This construction rerouted the majority of the water flow to a small section on the western side of the slough. Scientists soon recognized that the Tamiami Trail was having detrimental effects on the ecology of the Everglades by transforming ecosystems. Reduced water flows increased the frequency of wildfires, burning peat soils, facilitated the invasion of non-native plant species, and decreased habitat for wading bird colonies, as well as other species such as alligators. Because of these drastic changes to our Everglades ecosystem, Scientists, along with environmental groups, pushed for modifications to the Tamiami Trail that would allow for a more natural sheet flow through the Everglades National Park while restoring the natural marsh connectivity as well as the quality, timing, and distribution of water. Based on findings from an experimental program authorized by Congress in 1984, the Everglades National Park Protection and Expansion Act of 1989 directed the Chief of the Army Corps of Engineers, the Secretary of the Army, and the Secretary of the Interior to improve water deliveries into the park and take steps to restore the natural hydrological conditions within the park. As a result, in 1992, a general design memorandum described the plan known as the Modified Water Deliveries Project, Mod Waters for short, for modifying the flow of water to Everglades National Park. The plan was approved in 1993, and construction began in 1995. One of the key features of Maud Waters was to make modifications to the 11-mile stretch of the Tamiami Trail that had not been raised during the 1960s construction project. A stretch of roadway along the eastern portion of the trail would be replaced with a one-mile bridge, which would allow for the sheet flow of fresh water from Water Conservation Area 3 into Everglades National Park. Construction of the One Mile Bridge was completed in 2013. Scientists and environmental groups insisted a One Mile Bridge wasn't enough. In March 2009, before construction started on the Maud Waters One Mile Bridge, Congress approved an Omnibus Appropriations Act that included a directive to the National Park Service to immediately evaluate the feasibility of constructing additional bridges that would restore more natural water flow to Everglades National Park with the purpose of restoring habitat within the park and the ecological connectivity between the park and the water conservation areas. In November 2010, the National Park Service completed the Tamiami Trail Modifications Next Steps Final Environmental Impact Statement that proposed solutions for restoring flow to Everglades National Park in two phases. Next Steps Phase 1 focused on raising and bridging a 3.2-mile segment of Tamiami Trail located 4.5 miles west of the One Mile Bridge. In 2017, work began to build two bridges, totaling 2.6 miles, and a 0.6-mile stretch was raised between the bridges to allow access to a local airboat concession. This phase of the project was managed by the Florida Department of Transportation in coordination with the National Park Service, it cost $180 million and was completed in May 2019. By the fall of 2019, the old roadbed was removed to once again allow flow into Everglades National Park. In September 2020, the Tamiami Trail Next Steps Phase 2 contract was awarded. This final phase focuses on the remaining 6.7 miles of Tamiami Trail, where 13 culverts will be modified. Six of the existing culverts will be replaced with 60-foot-long slab bridges, and the remaining culverts will be modified to improve wildlife access and allow for improved flow. In addition, the most important component of Phase 2 is elevating the roadway to 13.1 feet, which will protect the stability of the Tamiami Trail roadway during higher water levels expected in the adjacent canal. This construction is expected to begin in November 2020 and is funded through a $60 million Federal Highway Administration grant and $37 million from the state of Florida. One last crucial project is the removal of a 5.5-mile section of the Old Tamiami Trail, part of the western stretch that remained after the road was moved to the north. The purpose of the Old Tamiami Trail Modifications Project is to enhance sheet flow from the Water Conservation Area 3A into Shark River Slough. 
Removal of the old road began January 2020 and is anticipated to be completed in November 2021. For more than a century, the Tamiami Trail has disrupted the natural flow of fresh water through the Everglades and down to the Gulf of Mexico and Florida Bay. Today, the increased water flows are expected to result in improvements to hundreds of thousands of acres of wetlands in the Everglades National Park and Water Conservation Area 3. Some of the benefits include increasing habitat for wildlife, including threatened and endangered species such as the wood stork, the Everglades snail kite, and the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. Increasing sheet flow conditions, improving ecological connectivity, and providing a more natural flow through the wetlands. Decreasing invasive exotic plant species and saltwater intrusion. Reducing wildlife fatalities associated with the roadway. Reducing the duration of damaging water levels in Water Conservation Area 3A, which improves conditions for tree islands. And reducing carbon loss from soil oxidation and damaging peat fires. In addition to this impressive list of benefits, Maud Waters and Tamiami Trail Next Steps are foundational projects for the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, or SERP for short. SERP aims to restore the right quantity of water at the right quality to be distributed to the right place at the right time throughout South Florida. A critical component of SERP is to allow for increased freshwater flows to be directed south into the water conservation areas and Everglades National Park. Without the completion of these projects along the Tamiami Trail, SERP's goal of restoring, preserving, and protecting our South Florida ecosystems while providing water supply and flood protection for the region would not be possible.